You're listening to the Inquisitive Red Podcast, the show that brings you philosophical ponderings of your life from a bird's eye view. Now, here's your host, Shah. So welcome to the Inquisitive Wren Podcast. Really nice to have you here. Today, and which you would know from my intro, I've got a very special guest. So Anne Cecile is a French author, screenwriter, and filmmaker. She has written five feature films, uh, two TV pilots, amazing, and four short films, as well as her debut novel, You Pull Me In, published in 2019. I'm really excited to talk to her today about her creative process and the creative process. What happens, how she's pulled in, no pun intended, (laughs) how she's pulled in, uh, how it all happens for her, because it may be different for everyone, and also how she got into filmmaking and screenwriting. So welcome, Anne-Cecile. Hi, Sha. Hi, lovely to have you here. Oh, I'm excited to be here. Very honored to be here. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. I have got loads of questions because you're such a busy bee. You have so many projects on the go, and you've actually completed some projects, which is a problem for a lot of people. They start, but they don't finish. So we'll talk about that as well. But I want to start out, um, and guys, you will hear me ruffle papers sometimes. I'm new to this, so bear with me. I've got notes, and it's just going to happen that way. Okay, so um, I want to start out by asking how you began to write. I mean, what sort of pulled you in to writing? Um, I spent a lot of my childhood inventing stories. I think I spent a lot of time on my own, actually, because my family was into tennis and I wasn't into tennis. So I always had to invest in, invent stories in my room. I think a lot of writers or, or creatives have that in you know, the background. Well, I was, when I was a kid, I used to create stories. But um, I was thinking about acting first, actually. So I got into that, first of all. And I remember I went to the, because I lived in London for 22 years. And um, I started with the, at the London Drama School. And for a while I did acting, and uh, but I remember it being really difficult because um, where are you in, in a creative? Uh, so being a creative is always a bit difficult because you know if you work in a normal job, I mean I'm using you know quote marks here when I say this, but n- not every single um, email that you send is going to be like oh you could have used that word in that email or you know something like that. But when you're creative, like people like really critic your work. A lot and you know it's, it's kind of difficult sometimes with self-confidence but I think for actors it's even worse because it's really immediate you know it's like didn't like the look of me you know it can go even beyond that or my personality or anything like that so I find it difficult and I have a hell of a lot of respect for actors because of that reason actually but I did that for a while and then I went to Los Angeles I went to, uh, to see a friend of mine I spent three months there and the late 90s and um and then uh, we did a, a sort of writing workshop and during the writing workshop i had no expectations i didn't know anything and i wrote this thing that was like a film and i was like oh i wrote this because it, it was one of those things like oh take five minutes to write something on the top of your head with the color blue i remember something like this and i was like oh this is amazing i was like really impressed what i you know done i think oh and I just thought, actually, I think I would like writing better because I have, I'd have more control over narratives. You know, it wouldn't be just like, uh, although acting, you know, is something putting someone at someone else's work. And also, also, you do have a bit of creative license, but this would be my own in, for my own mind. You know, so I, I love the idea of that. So I just thought, okay, I'll maybe I'll do screenwriting. But that took many years. I studied it and I thought about it. And, you know. And um, so it's just more like recently that uh, I'm starting to be really more focused on, on this. But it, it's just a very hard business if you don't know people or maybe you're not in L.A., although that is changing with a, the with a pandemic. We've realized now that we can do anything, you know. But um, so I, I placed in competition. I did fairly well. And, uh, and I took a year out to write my book as well because I wanted to do something else for a little while because I just thought, well, this screenwriting thing is not going anywhere. So let's write a book. You know, I just had this book that I had to write because uh, 
this is something I've been meaning to write for a while. And then I came back to screenwriting again. I was like, like oh, yes, you play some competition, you do well, but nothing came out of it. And then during the pandemic, um, I started thinking about the whole process. And I thought, well, I quit acting because I just thought I didn't have any uh, control over this. People would pick me or not. And then I came to screenwriting and it's exactly the same. People were just like, oh, do you know, please, please buy my work or please love me. I feel like... Uh, uh, sort of a, um, a character in a Jane Austen novel, you know, like uh, I go to the ball and I hope that a man is going to pick me, but uh, no one is picking me. So, you know, <laughs> I, stay, I, I stay around and, you know, don't do anything. So, so for me, I just thought I need to do something for me, something that's empowering. I'm a, I'm a powerful woman. I need to do something creative, you know, put my, my work out there, but do it myself. So then I started to think, well, I'll, I produce my own short film, you know, in Barcelona where I live now. I didn't know anybody, so I started to like research online and do like a Zoom meeting and stuff like that. And I thought, but I need to do it differently because um, usually when when filmmakers uh, do short films, they put mm. it to film festivals. So that takes a whole year, you know, people will maybe get an award or something like that. But mm, it might get somewhere, but you may get a few laurels, but you know, it doesn't necessarily lead anywhere. And I just thought, let's do something different, something more like, something quicker. So I just thought I'll do a comedy because I love comedy and I think I have a knack for comedy, I, I think. And, um, and I thought, how about I get an influencer to, to, to star in the, in, the, in the short and then through his um, fan base, we can have like a sort of YouTube live and then get like maybe a million people to watch it. And then I can go to producer and say, look, I've had at least a million people look at me, watch my, my movie. So that's, that's the idea. So I started out in March, like I had no idea about producing, no idea about anything. And I didn't know any influencers, to be honest. So it was like, oh, and I had to find a local one as well, because I live in Barcelona, I can't win someone in the US flying someone from the US I'm, I'm not rich you know I don't have the money for this so um so I started to get people gather people around and then before contacting the influencer I had to get the actors for the actual film because he would have a very small part uh basically it's called a penis conundrum and it's about a lady who becomes very strict lady who becomes flustered when she sees the outline of her colleague's penis, you know, during a meeting. And then she goes a bit, a bit bonkers after that. So it's all of that. So the, the, the influencer is the penis man. And so he doesn't have any word, you know, so that's also the thing for him. It's an opportunity to act, but also he's not a professional actor and something obviously professional. So, so it was like a, a, a good trade-off, I felt. Mm -hmm. But the other two actors are professional, proper professional proper professionals so I, I've had a sort of like discussions with them and then recently we've uh, filmed a teaser for it because we're trying to mm -hmm. do crowdfunding campaign, campaign as well as trying to get um, sponsors for it and um, so now we're editing the, the teaser and then we're hoping to take that to the influencer because this guy is obviously like all influencers they are courted so I couldn't just come up and say oh I'm going to make this yeah. film and you know Show me what it's going to look like. You know, people want to see. They just want to, they don't want to just. Amazing. But we're going to come to that. We're going to, because I've, I've got well, some interesting questions, that. I think, anyway, about the penis conundrum. <laughs> uh, I had my whole spiel to introduce that bit, but it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. You're being Anne Cecile. It, it just happened, but we're going to come to that. Um, yeah, but, you know, I wanted to ask, as you were talking about acting and things like that, what was your first paid job? Do you... I did get a, a paid role that was for Channel 4, I remember. That was like one of the background actors for um, uh, something that was like, a, a, a mm -hmm. documentary but like a, one of those they act in it they're, they're not mockumentaries because that's right. the, no but right. a real documentary based on the but then they, they always add those scenes in i don't know if you know like you okay. know that shot somewhere so i was one of the background actors so it wasn't a huge hot role um so that was the first thing and then with screenwriting a few years back i mm -hmm. was paid to do to do something for a, a swiss producer and for mm. TV, and uh, mm. but I'm not even sure that you went much further with it because that's what happens. Sometimes you would write and even get paid for something, yeah. and yeah. you know you don't see the you know you don't see 
you won't see actual end product mm -hmm. in the end. So that's also um, with a creative, it's always the tip of the iceberg. People would have on, would be on IMDb and then say, oh, I've done all this, but they may have done other stuff. I mean, with actors, with actors a bit less, but in this case it was mm. because no one, you know, I didn't get credit for it. And the agent, my agent was a bit funny at the time as well. And, and being a woman as well, you don't... Well, like, like, well, well it's, yeah. but it's something else yeah, I want to yeah, ask yeah. you about because yeah. you're working on yeah. something to do with feminism and women and we're going to come to that as well. You have so much going on. Uh, but just about that, um, because, you know, the creative process, as you say, sometimes people starve for their art. Uh, and if we look at history, centuries ago, people died for their art. Yeah. And it's not a very prosperous, well, it can be, but I suppose it just depends. Mm -hmm. But what do you make about that? Why do you think that is so difficult sometimes for people to get going? Ah. Well, I think that's a narrative that we all believe in. And I, say, and I think, as if with everything else, it's very destructive. Right. And I think mental health and creation, we always think, oh, you have to be a little bit crazy or you have to be on drugs yeah. or you have to be drunk to create, which is awful, awful, awful. It's not true. Mm -hmm. You can create and be happy. I just mm -hmm. think because of this narrative, we don't think we should be paid for our work. We don't think, you know, it's all in the mind. And I think it's a, a very unhelpful and destructive destructive narrative and some people do get paid for their art such a good point so such a brilliant point as well you're absolutely right so um people do honest. see really creative people as a bit nuts or they on drugs because we have so many examples of course of or commit suicide, of course, or have mental health problems, mm -hmm. but or are very creative. So we, but we know? have so many examples of uh, well-known people who have turned to drugs. But I, I, I like what you were saying there because I think it really is a fact of, I wonder, I'll see what you think about it. People would have had those problems, I believe, even if they weren't creative. I, I don't think we should bl we can blame creativity for a person using drugs. Uh, what do you think? No, I don't. I don't think so. I just think it's because mm -hmm. it's not seen as something. For example, if you yeah. you know with your family, exactly. if you go and say, "Oh, I'm mm -hmm. going to study to be a doctor. I'm going to study to be even a, a secretary. Mm -hmm. Anything." People, go, oh yeah, that's that's a career. That's something, you know. But if you're going to be a creative, it's yeah. like, oh, you're, you're a bit of a loser. Oh, show me, what have you done? And unfortunately, it takes sometimes, sometimes years to get something yeah. produced. And so it, it, it's hard because, you know, we all, you know, people's in, opinions of us are very important, right? I mean, we can't say, oh, I, I just go through life. I don't care what people think. Well, no, it's not the case, you know. So, you know, we don't always have supportive parents or yeah. anything. But I think it's fear because, mm -hmm. like I said, again, the narrative is very much, oh, you're going to be a starving artist yeah, or you're going to take drugs or whatever. And and I think the par your parents want to protect you. So I see more of something like this. But I think if you're yeah. creative, what you need to do is protect your work. So most of us mm -hmm. have to do a, a work on the side, a job on the side, so whatever that job is which actually helps us because then we get to see life as well, experience life, you know, different type of work and, and keep your creative process perhaps to yourself. It's such, um, I, in history, if we read about all the great artists, they seem quite sensitive to their surroundings, to other people, you know, some of the greatest writers, you can feel the emotion. So, do you experience that and your sensitivity? Do you think you have a sensitivity to create? Yeah. You need to have empathy for sure. And you observe people a lot, but then you have to drudge up a lot of, uh, of your personal yes. issues as well, because anything that you create needs to be real, you know, otherwise there's no point in it. So it comes from a place of truth. So that's, I think creatives don't have a choice. I think if you had a choice, I'll, maybe if I had a choice, I'd be, I don't know, 
I don't know where I'll be, but but I mean, although I, I think you can have both actually, because yeah. my new venture is about that. But but I think yeah. you know, okay. if you're creative, like um, no, no, I know what you yeah, mean. But that's what happens really with mean, creatives so as well. It's very yes. interesting. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay. I've lost it. Golly, I've been lost in my. I'm a sensitive person. You were saying sensitivity. Yes, indeed. It's sometimes woo, and I think for many of us, it feels that way because it's not. Again, it's not going right. to write an email about mm -hmm. if you work in an office and you have to sell. I don't know. Yeah. Mm, anything, and you're like, you don't care about. You know, okay. you can talk about it because. Thank you. We got person. there in the end. <laughs> it's exactly that, this though. Is this is you. You put yourself up. Yeah. No. No. That's you right. Now, um, gosh, there's so much. So, I want to talk a bit about the penis conundrum since you brought it up. Do you know about Freud? Yeah, Do you know yeah. Sigmund Freud? Uh, his idea about penis envy. He believed that women had penis envy because they wanted to be men. They wanted the power that supposedly men had, which men were. I mean, we know history. Men did have all the power. Well, I mean, that's still happening today, uh, you know, with the pay rise issue and all that. But um, he he also talked a bit about women not having, and the only way they could have a penis as such was to give birth to one, was to have a child. And he felt that the only way somebody could get rid of penis envy was to actually birth a child, which was very, which is quite, in my opinion, you know, um, I think it's quite old. It's ancient. Uh, he was challenged by a, a woman psychiatrist, uh, but then he, then he blamed her. He said, mm -hmm. you've got penis envy mm -hmm. <laughs> because she challenged him, uh, which is quite interesting. Uh, so, you know, well, I mean, Freud's a whole topic in itself. We'll get to Freud on another podcast. <laughs> but why? what brought you to write something regarding the penis conundrum. Why is it a conundrum? Because I, I thought about women and sexuality, uh, how we, because of society, I mean, it's a very long subject mm -hmm. list, but I mean, how we, we do have sexual feelings and I think it's the ebb and flow. And some days it's on our minds. And I think how we tend to hide this for mm. many reasons for men, because well, we're women, then we're not going to go, oh, you know, if <laughs> you see men do that, but we can imagine women going, oh, by the way, today. And then you, and plus you wouldn't want the intention that comes with it. That's another issue. But, um, but we tend to not only hide it, but not talk about it with people. And I think it's, that's why I had this woman was really strict, really, you know, she wanted to control everything. Thing. And when this happens, the mm. sexual feelings is so it became this comedy, but it's also examining how we, you know, how, how we women sort of like in you know experience experience this and and and, and that's that's what it is. It, it catches her by wow. surprise because she's at work, she's on she's in control, she's very strict, she's you know, her yes. back is straight, and then she sees it and she's oh she doesn't know what to do. Interesting look. because like, biologically oh, that's What's spot on. And then, you know, Biologically, that uh, we only need to see an image to, to spur our because physical sensations. So uh, people think the mind and body don't work together. You only need to have a sexual thought to know that they do. Absolutely. So <laughs> they, they do work together. And so that's an argument that I've heard certainly in my career as a counselor and all that. People think, oh, the mind, body, but they do work together. <laughs> this is so interesting. So where are you now in the process with this um, this project? Um, finished the, te uh, the teaser, which was, was really interesting for me because I first, I didn't have the confidence to direct it. I just thought, oh, maybe I'm not good enough for this, but I had such a... A wow. clear idea in my mind. So I had someone else do the teaser and it wasn't exactly how I wanted it. And I'm, so that's why it's taking a while to edit because it wasn't exactly how I wanted it. So now it was good because now I know I'm going to direct it. So that's what I found out from this. 
So once the teaser is out and then in September, we're going to do the crowdfunding. We're going to put online. I, I've got um, the Penis Conundrum, which is Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I've got all three. And then, because I do a diary, because what I've done, I've decided from the start to do like, uh, particularly more in, on Twitter, but also on Instagram, like from the start, because it's my first short. I'm doing this, I have this big idea, this big production, the influence, everything. And I just thought, well, I'll, I'll do I'll just be honest. I'll, I'll give an honest account. So some of the failures, some of the good stuff, you know. So, so but apparently, well, everyone tells me that filmmaking this is how it is. Even sometime on the last day, you'll be like, oh, I wanted a sunny day like yesterday here, but it's raining or, you know, this guy, one of the, the actors is missing, so we have to rewrite something very, very quickly or anything like that. So budget constraints, anything. So, so I'm learning this and it's exciting because funny enough, you make it better. Cause for example, before the, the teaser had an extra scene that I'm going to take out, but they've got more the first scene. So I'm like, oh, I'm learning so much. And I wish and if so, someone is doing screenwriting. But what I'm you're saying is it's things have changed now. Business, you can be your director, your own director, your, your writer. Really, really yes, your producer. your producer. You can do it all. It makes you understand. Amazing. The other yes. side so that's a huge you know, step forward in technology thing. and giving the artist back their power. Also, yes. Correct. Yeah. We, I mean, not only that, but um, like I said, I didn't know anybody uh, in Barcelona that was doing films. So I did research, like groups, anything, and I managed to connect with loads of people. And at the same time, I had a woman I met after that who was a friend now, a director, who managed to produce a whole short film with people from seven, seven different countries, you know, during, during the pandemic called The Pair. Her name is Louise. And it's just, um, it's, and also my other thing, the other thing I want to do is like my team is mainly mm -hmm. female because women, because only 30% of all Yes, why are women is that? Why is so that? I thought, oh, let's try. And do you know what? It was very hard. It's, it's, I did find it a bit harder to find women because we don't advertise ourselves as much as men. We don't. We're not as good. That's one of the things we need to improve on. Well, because we're supposed to stay in our lane, isn't it? Like when you know, you tell the guys, "I'll oh, be boisterous." You know, you 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 go out there, do it. You know, you're you're guy. You know, you're supposed to be free. Do you know what I mean? Like you know, when when they mess around, when they mess up, like, oh, but they're boys you know they're supposed to do that us we don't, we're not allowed to do this we're supposed right. to stay That's in right. our lane and and it's really interesting because for example they say that girls do better at school and people were like oh that's a good thing and a psychologist a female psychologist actually it's not that good because it means we we do well at school because we want to stay in our in, in our lane and we're supposed to do well but after that we're not going to be entrepreneurs yeah. we're not going to be people because we're going to think oh no i can't do this so yes, True. for us it's uh, it's hard to, to, to really really boast about you know uh, some men like you know, yeah. as, you know that's an entire sociological experiment, experiment we so can do but we've got loads of work I'm to do all right. Like, no what do you shame, think you know? the biggest <laughs> the challenge for industry <laughs> so learn to say oh yeah, I'm good at today. This. I'm very good at this actually. So. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, there are many more people. I think about screenwriting in particular. Many mm. more people trained to do films now, and I don't know why that is. Because we were talking about that the other day on on Twitter with other writers about like people assume that you bring that brings you money if you you become the next Spielberg but um, there are more people on the market there also I mean more opportunities right now with different platforms and everything so I think it's yes. better it seems now like if you it. don't know anyone in the so business, we're going to get can, into your head just a little bit networking, how do you think media, ideas are born whatever you can succeed so I think I think yes I think it's better but it's still hard work I think that yeah. Mm. 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 <laughs> 
for, for me sometimes in the middle of the night, but sometimes I watch people actually, I watch mm -hmm. people a lot and <laughs> I get a lot of ideas. Like recently, I, like yesterday I was, cause I live in Barcelona, like I said, and I went to the beach and there's this, this showers you use after, after, you know, you've been to the, the sea and then you wash yourself. People just rinse it off, you know, that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> it was this guy who was massaging every part of his body under the, and it took like five, 10 minutes. And there were people like washing, going like, dude, you know, what are you doing? And I don't think, you know, that's another idea. You can put that character in a film, you know, because it's just so funny. Like in a comedy, you see this guy and people watching him having no idea. Like people were like, and he was just literally massaging every, it's just, it's so funny. So yeah, people gave me so many ideas because people are oh yeah human. I mean, and I think you 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 link that for example. I mean, this is just like I, I'll put this in in a scene somewhere. But maybe you see mm. uh, there's an older lady also that I, I think is fascinating here, and I'm gonna put that was one of my characters. And then you have. Thanks for watching, everyone. To hear the rest of the episode, head over to Apple Podcast and listen to Anne Cecile Veal talk a bit more about her creative writing process and also some of the projects she has up and coming. So we hope to see you again soon.